there's a notion, whole notion around being an addict that it's awful, terrible, bad. Shouldn't shouldn't have those behaviors, bad behaviors. I'm bad, it's bad, the whole thing's bad. And as you examine the situation, as you examine addictive behavior, compulsive behavior, and I've shared this many times, when you look into the world, what you see is people who succeed in the world are compulsive. The difference is what that mechanism is focused on. Place that compulsive mechanism on the creative act of your life and you will succeed because that's what the mechanism, the mind, the mechanism is programmed to do. You can focus on a task longer than other people. Compulsivity, great resource. Let's learn how to use it. Here's a tool uh, you may have heard. You may have heard about emotional sobriety. Well, here you go reading from the bottom to the top, Uh, physical addiction, behavioral addiction, and emotional addiction. What I'm going to do right now is show you how to transform the need for physical and behavioral addiction. And I will do that by talking about emotional EA, writing on the screen, emotional addiction, and Uh, Emotional capacity, EC, emotional capacity. I drink because my pain, my trauma. I don't feel good. I drink to numb the pain. I do drugs and alcohol to numb the pain. Behavioral addiction, sex, work, gambling, all to numb the pain. The real issue here is our emotional addiction. It's our underlining worthlessness, inadequacy that's driving the need, that creates the need for our physical and behavioral behaviors, addictive behaviors. That's what we're talking about here. So by by accessing, looking on the left here, right? Act, by accessing sobriety in, in the area of physical and behavioral addiction, abstaining, avoiding, right? You then move into or create the opportunity to confront my emotional addiction, the underlying emotional responses that drive my trauma, my pain, et cetera. So this is EA, this is my emotional addiction. Now, by moving into the pain more, increase, not moving away, but moving into, not abstinence, right? The opposite of what it takes to heal from physical and behavioral addiction, movement into the experiences. So it's more pain, more fear, more anxiety, not less, right? As you move into the experiences, the emotional experiences, what you develop is emotional capacity. Emotional capacity, think of it like endurance, the ability to run 25 miles, a marathon. You don't start off with the ability, with the capacity, with the endurance uh, to run a marathon, but rather you start off wherever you start off, which for me would be a quarter of a mile. And that's where you start. And so like this analogy here, you start where you start and you move into the experiences and and, and you move into the pain, the unresolved traumas, et cetera. And through that experience, you expand your emotional capacity to feel anger. What this means is, is my capacity to feel anger is larger than the feeling of anger in the moment. My capacity to feel anxiety is larger than the feeling of anxiety in the moment. I have a greater capacity than the feeling I'm having, which is the opposite of the way you're living life now. It's the opposite of the way you're living life now, which is my experience of anger, rage, sadness, stress, et cetera, is larger than my capacity to handle it. And that's why I need the bowl. That's why I need the physical and behavioral addictions. So through addressing my emotional addiction, I build emotional capacity, which erases the bowl, which erases the need for physical, behavioral, and emotional addiction. And you arrive at personal empowerment. Thank you for listening. Thank you for playing. Thank you for choosing to consider the possibility that there's more for you. I'm really grateful for the opportunity You give me the opportunity to show up, and I'm grateful. Thank you.
Enjoy the video.